I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about date pickers, CSS refactoring, HTML audio, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a date paginator for Twitter Bootstrap. This is a very interesting UI plugin that allows you to paginate different date ranges. So here you can see we have this bar full of different dates. In the center, the selected date is Monday, April 6th, 2015 or 0-15, as Nick says. And if you click on any of these different dates, you can see it pops up and moves the selected date over to what you have selected. Now you can also click this little calendar icon in the top right and that will move the whole thing over. Now this is going to be useful if you're doing something like different reports and want to change what the user can select and the different date range that way. Now this does have a few different dependencies but if this was a requirement in your project you were probably already, already using most of these Bootstrap, jQuery, Moment.js and Bootstrap Date Picker. Now, once you have all those, this is very, very easy to use. Just give it your div and then call the date paginator function. Now you can give it different options such as the selected date and the format and then initialize it with those different options. Now you can give it a start date and an end date and even the option of whether or not to highlight today. Ton of different days. So if this is something you think might be beneficial for you in your project, Go ahead and check it out in the show notes, which you can find right below this video. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is this wonderful article over on the CSS Tricks blog called Starting a Refactor with CSS Dig. Now, CSS Dig is a Chrome extension, and this article is written by the creator of that Chrome extension. So, pretty cool resource on CSS Dig. Basically, now, I believe we talked about that on a previous episode of the Treehouse Show. Yes, I think we did. Basically, it allows you to, as the name implies, dig into your CSS and find places that could use some refactoring. It's a great Chrome extension. I, I guess I could even say that I dig it. You could say that, and you did. So when you're using CSS Dig, you'll go ahead and start the audit and it explains a little bit about how that works and actually some instances where some content security policies can cause it to fail, but we won't worry about that. First, a good way to speed up your website is to try to reduce HTTP requests. So it points out a couple of areas where you might want to combine your CSS and then it also shows you areas where there are a ton of colors. So this is actually from the Huffington Post from a little while back. And it says, although it looks pretty, do they really need all those shades of red? So just look at all those different colors and think about what that must look like in CSS. There's got to be a better way than having all of these different colors defined, right? Really? I mean... I guess it could go either way, right? Kind of a kind of a gray area. Yeah, a little bit. It's not completely black and white. I know. I get sad if there are too many, you know. Yeah. Feel a little blue. I'm glad we have such colorful personality around like you, Jason. Me too. For comparison, not everybody has that kind of personality around. You could say that they're kind of green with envy. For comparison, here's apple.com. They have just a couple of shades of gray and this blue color. So you could say what's well, black and white and blue all over. Well, apple.com. Uh, so that's actually a lot more simple. So that's a, that's a much better way of representing colors in CSS just because there's, there's less of them. It's less code to manage. And they also give an example of what that might look like in SCSS or SAS, and you could create just a couple of different colors and then actually map them or reference them. Another area where you can have a lot of inconsistencies is spacing. So it goes into detail about that as well, but I will let you read that on your own. 
Anyway, really cool article about how to try to consolidate a lot of your CSS, improve a little bit of performance, and generally make things more organized and, I guess, visually legible on your website. Very nice. Very cool stuff. Next up, we have a plugin called jQuery Toast. This is useful for giving you messages to tell your users. Here is an example. If you take a look at the bottom left of the screen, there is the Toast pop-up. Ooh, look at that. Now, there are a bunch of different options for doing this. You can have it fade. You can have some transitions. You can have it stay on the screen. And look at that. You can even have some different HTML and CSS inside of the Toast. And let's see. We can do a little slide transition through the Toast. Oh, look at that. It's just like a real toaster. It just pops right up there. Yeah. Nice. That's, that might be how the name was inspired. Possibly. I actually, you know, the way it actually happened was there, there was a couple authors of this plugin sitting around, and they said, hey, I'd like to propose a jQuery Toast plugin written in JavaScript. I am totes into that. Oh. Yeah. So you can also customize this plugin. I've, I've done this uh, right here right now. I'm calling this a little, little hot dog toast, right? Look at that. It's yellow and red. Oh, it's yeah. got a little mustard on it, yeah, a little, little ketchup. Yeah. It's nice. I know. So here are the different options for toast. You can uh, text. There's no butter option, which is uh, clearly an omission. Really strange. Yeah. Um, you can give it heading and then the transition, whether or not to hide it, and just a bunch of different things. Anyway, if you're in the market for a, a Toast plugin, go ahead and check this out. You can find a link in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is HTML GL. This is a way for you to render. Say good luck to HTML, right? It's actually graphics library, but that was a good guess. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's a way for you to render HTML and CSS using WebGL. Now, WebGL is basically. You wishing good luck to the web. Again, it's, it's, it's graphics language. Huh. We've been through this. WebGL is a way for you to represent 3D objects in the browser using a syntax that's similar to the popular graphics library, OpenGL. Which, which is, of course, means good luck to everybody out in the open. It, that's it. That's actually what that means. It's, it's, it's good luck. And this is pretty weird because you might think, well, why, why wouldn't I want to just render my HTML like normal? And that's perfectly OK. But this good luck or graphics library version is another interesting way of doing it. And I'll show you why. Let's take a look at this demo here. So what they've done is they've taken Ooh, the DOM. Nick, you might want to get your computer out of the water. Yeah. it's, it's uh, That is definitely not good luck for your computer to yeah. be inside of water. Well, let me take it out of the, the water here. Oh, now everything's all blurry. Oh, wow. Look at that. Huh. Looks like I need reading GL glasses. <laughs> so now everything's pixelated. So you can see I'm applying these, these different filters here, and I can actually adjust the parameters of each one of these. Wow. It's pretty neat. I can actually invert all of these. Go back to that watery effect because that's kind of neat. That is kind of neat. And when I click on these, it can actually detect where I'm clicking. So I can click on this, and I'll say Breaking Bad. Actually, I'm curious if I click like right between one of these ripples. Oh, I think I clicked on one. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, I'm clicking between these, and sometimes it's catching it, sometimes it's not. But it's kind of interesting that it does that because it is actually using some WebGL shaders here to do this. Now, the reason that this is interesting is, A, doing something like this in CSS would be almost impossible. I'm not even sure how you would do that. But the second thing is, even if you can do it in CSS, maybe something like a, a blur here, it's still going to be vastly more performant in WebGL because it's running everything off of the GPU. And so you have this dedicated chip in here that's basically doing all of the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to rely on just the CPU to do all of these neat effects. So this is pretty experimental at this point. So I wouldn't recommend doing this in production necessarily unless you really 
know what you're doing. If you're feeling lucky. But, right, I mean, if you, if you do it in production, I'd say good luck to you because uh, it might not work everywhere. This is sort of still in development, but it's an interesting idea and it's one that I think could be kind of a wave of the future. I don't know, we'll really have to see if this gets any kind of traction at all, but it's a really interesting way of rendering HTML because in a lot of instances, it's way, way faster to do all types of animations and effects. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Well, next up, we have a plugin called audio.js. All right, I'm listening. This is a little JavaScript library that lets you use the HTML5 audio tag anywhere. Uh, it's kind of like a polyfill. It uses a flash fallback for browsers that do not support the HTML5 audio element. And here is what it looks like. You can see it right on the top of the page there. All you do is drop the script into your page and then initialize audio.js. And then you can use the HTML audio tag anywhere inside of your HTML. And it will have a flash fallback all the way down to IE version 6. Wow. And you can customize it just like you would expect. Here's a hot dog audio player, just like we had a little nice. bit before. Yeah, but with toast, you know, got toast, hot dogs, pretty much anything you want. Uh, you can do a bunch of different players, autoplay, loop, whatever you want, and even supports a playlist, and you can customize the CSS. Now, it goes through a little bit about the different security, but for the most part, this is very easy to use, and if you know how to use the HTML5 audio tag, you already know how to use this plugin. So that's about all we have time for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes right below this video. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you next week.